Hi, this is Peter Teuscher. I'm here with Toby Debker. Thanks for joining us for another podcast where we like to pick a topic and see where the conversation takes us. We basically uh, look to have conversations that um, add value by um, helping you with your personal development journey or your pro- professional development or any kind of associated topics to that. Maybe sometimes even a little bit of philosophy. So how are you doing today, Toby? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I, I'm wondering if people can tell that we're uh, recording an evening session here, if you feel a bit more fatigued or tired or whatever, but <laughs> it's a different energy to, to our, our call today. I don't know. Yeah, or maybe it's going to make us a little, little more mellow. I don't know. We're, we're usually pretty relaxed. I, I think yeah. also mm-hmm. both of us have been so busy. It's been a while since we've talked. And, yeah. uh, and I, and I think, uh, yeah, I think that that's tiring. Cause I, I was super busy all weekend too. I played in a basketball, tur- I was telling you offline, I played in a basketball tournament and, uh, which, um, is actually a tournament for, well, uh, they, they call it masters, you know, it's a nice way of saying a bunch of old guys <laughs> trying to play basketball still. Um, but yeah, we had a tournament in, in Hamburg and I played with... Uh, it's better t- than seniors, at least. Yeah, seniors. <laughs> yeah, the seniors. Uh, that works when you're when you're in college and you're a senior. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, at our age, you don't want to be called seniors. <laughs> We're not in, in retirement age yet. So um, yeah, but uh, so yeah, I, uh, on top of uh, playing a bunch of basketball games and... Um, and traveling all of last week, I think uh, it was it's it's good to come down and relax. I've got a week of uh, you know being able to work from home. So and uh, yeah, and mm-hmm. you've been equally busy, right? Yeah, it's it's been a lot of stuff going on. I mean, professionally and privately. So uh, it's good to just yeah, reconnect a bit and uh, have a focused conversation about something. You know that these these kind of topics that we enjoy. So that's good. Yeah, absolutely. So you've got a great topic for us today, and um, yeah, so you're right. I think this is a good kind of taking us away from all the all the business we've had and kind of get back to our our um, enjoyable talks that we have. So, um, yeah. so tell everybody <laughs> what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So um, the topic for the day is intention setting, and and. Um, I think at numerous accounts in our conversations, I've been talking about, you know, how you can work with intentions, and but, we, but I, I don't think we ever dedicated, like a whole, like dedicated a topic to it. So I thought we could just dig into that, um, and to start off with, I, I think I mentioned also many times that we, me and the kids, we have kind of a, um, a thing in, that we do in the morning that we. We talk to talk about what's the theme for for the day, you know. So and and it's a one way of, of working with intention setting that I think is really helpful. Um, and it doesn't work a hundred percent, of course, nothing does, but it, it it to a great extent it really it really helps you to um, yeah, put your attention where you bring your attention to uh, and your energy in a direction where you want to go. So basically, how that works is that we have a conversation. So. Okay, what what kind of what 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 theme do you want to do you want to choose for today? And sometimes it's very obvious that yeah, today I want to focus on uh, focus. Focus could be be a theme for it. For instance, like um, if uh, if you have an important class or if it's a if it's a test or something coming up, then yeah, I I want to be focused. It could be about listening, or if it's if it's, it's some sometimes we have the, the conversation, nothing really comes up. So uh, then, then uh, sometimes they ask me, well, what 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 could be a good theme? And well, I'm not going to choose for you, but you know, there's a large range of themes that you can take from creativity to curious to kind to. So you just sort of point out that you can choose whatever you want, and it can be about being positive or kind or. Um, but then the, the 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 idea is that during the day at least during a few points that maybe your attention will go to, yeah, I have a theme today. So in this situation, I'm going to focus on listening or, or whatever the theme is. And then just see what happens. There's no commitment to it. There's no promises. There's no, uh, there's no accountability in that, that, that something bad is going to happen if you don't fulfill your theme. We just ask at the end of the day, so how did it go? And sometimes, oh, I actually forgot, nothing happened. Okay, but sometimes, and this is the, the great thing, is like, yeah, I realized 
that during class today, you know, I remember that my my theme was focus, and I really focused, you know, mm. and it make it made a big difference. And whenever that happens, I mean, that's just ooh, let's um, celebrate or whatever, just highlight that. Okay, it it made a difference. I think that's. Sounds... I think it's a really. Yeah, it's a simple little tool, and it's a wonderful little thing to just f bring your energy and attention in a direction that will be helpful for you. Yeah, I think that sense of success when you connect the, you know, the, the intentions that you've set for yourself, and then you recognize, that, you know, the difference it makes, the success it brings. I think that mm -hmm. that's such a well, it's fulfilling, and it's such a kind of an aha moment where it's like, why don't I do this more often, right? So. Mm. That's great. That's great that you're teaching mm. your kids that at such a young age. So, yeah, well, I mean, it's but it, it it helps me as well, and I use that in 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 workshops, and I think even in, in some of the projects that we did a long time ago, I think I think we had a session on intention setting in the morning for all the participants. Okay, so we're we're gonna have, I mean, imagine a situation where you, you're going into. Um, Let's just put out a scenario that say that you you're going into a, a management or a, or a leadership development training or something like that. And many of our participants have done this before. I right? say, so, oh, it's another training, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so then you talk about well, what what's your intention for today? So like, so how what how do you intend to go about this day? So it's your choice. So and it, it really brings the attention. So what do you have a choice to to bring to Put your intention to to how you how how this is going to go basically, and I always find that to be in general really positive. Uh, it it puts um, uh, fo it helps people to focus and 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 bring that sense of empowerment. If, well, empowerment I would say to to their actions. You know, it, it's going to steer their actions and their their thoughts in a way that that's going to be helpful helpful for them. So I mean, even in a in a meeting situation at work. So okay, well, what's uh, going into the, this meeting? What, what kind of intention do you have? Do you want to listen? Do you want to be informed? Do you want to participate? Do you want to, um, you know, share data? Whatever it is, what is your intention during this meeting? So you can play around with it in, in a lot of different uh, settings like that. Yeah, and I think intentions are important, but I don't not in a way. You know, this people like Sam Harris talk about intentions are important, and you know, I don't want to misquote him here, but you know, he often refers to it as you know, well, the re the reason why I did something, sort of justifying, uh, you know, doing bad things because you know, the, like the the means justifies the end sort of thing. I think for me, intention is important as um, as you say. As, as a point of focus, right? As hmm. a, a, and, and a way of gaining clarity of what you're trying to achieve before you achieve it. Um, and then internalizing that, you know, as, hmm. as coaches, we, I, I know I work with people, a lot of times people come to you for clarity as a coach. And, um, and so when you're, um, you know, when you, when you are thinking about your intention ahead of time, of what you're trying to get to it, you know, it's it's not necessarily just goal setting. It's um, it's kind of mm. the, this this visual. And I, you know, I'd be interested in sharing notes with you on how you do the intention setting, and I can tell you about about mine. But I, obviously, it's that sense of clarity and that um, you know, uh, you know, when when you're assessing, sometimes people set goals and they make them. They, they don't assess, you know, the, well, they'll, they'll talk about smart objectives, you know, is it, mm. is it specific enough? Is it, you know, uh, achievable and, and, um, and, and all the rest of it. But um, the, the thing is that, you know, they, they don't ask the question of, of why in the same way Simon Sinek asks us, you know, the, what's, mm. the, what's the why in what you're doing, right? And I think that yeah. all feeds into your, your intention. So getting clarity mm. around exactly. all of those things, I think, are, are really helpful. And, you know, I've, I've brought him up many times, you know, um, uh, Joe Dispenza talks a lot about uh, mm. this process of intention setting because he does it every day. So he says, and, and I, I mean, I believe he does. He, he says he doesn't get out of bed until he has a clear vision for his day, you know, and he doesn't, yeah. it's not just, you know, visual or an idea or being able to describe some details. He, he needs to feel the way it feels when it's going to be finished. Right. Yeah. And I think that's a super powerful thing because all of this, and this is what I try and do with, co with the coaching 
um, process is, is helping people internalize the things, you know, the, the beliefs and everything that they need in order to achieve what they're going to achieve. Unless mm -hmm. you can, once you've internalized it, once you've really created that vision for yourself and overcome the mental roadblocks, you know, the path forward becomes pretty easy from there or a lot yeah. easier, right? Um, yeah. So so I think that's the real power behind the whole in, in, in intention setting process. Yeah, for, I mean, for me, it's a little bit of, it's a little bit of a difference there because we talked a lot about, I mean, in, in, in coaching and in our conversations, we talk a lot about, a lot about goal setting, as you're saying, and, and, and also about vision setting. So what is it going to look like when I reach my goals, etc.? So for, for me, intention setting can be a lot, lot more vague and a lot more abstract than that. And it, for me, that works better, uh, right? Because if I, um, if I set up a, an objective for the day that I'm going to get this done or something, yeah, that's going to, it's going to, it's going to feel, but it doesn't say anything about how, how, how I want to bring my attitude and my, and my, my energy and my, my patterns of thinking into, to, to the day. Um, so it's more about checking for, for me, that's more about checking boxes. And if I get there, sure, I'll have a great sense of achievement. It's going to feel good. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't challenge me in the way, uh, it doesn't have necessarily, I, what I like about intention setting is that it challenges me to, to, uh, to push me a little bit out of a, my comfort zone, at least. It, what do I want to develop, right? So what do I want to get better at? So something about learning uh, and pushing me into that learning zone. So if I want to become better at, say, challenging, Right in 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 a certain context. So the intention might be, yeah, I want to be able, to, I I want to work on my challenging abilities today in a constructive way. That might be a great thing today. So it, it doesn't mean that oh today I have to challenge three three things. That would be a very specific kind of objective. It's just like, mm. okay, I want to be. And if I if I notice that oh now I have an opportunity to challenge, that's great. But if I don't have that opportunity and if it doesn't happen, okay. That's too bad. So for I know for some people that might feel like it might sound like oh it's not it's not specific it's not tough enough right hmm. but for me it, it's I think it's a really really wonderful kind of thing yeah, yeah. and uh, you know I don't think we're that far apart I I, I think the hopefully I probably didn't make it that clear but the 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 thing about you know setting goals and smart objectives I mean I'm I'm not interested as much in in these being specific and making it measurable and, you know, is it, is it relevant and, um, uh, you know, and, and what time frame am I giving myself? Those are things for very, you know, practical in the workplace and even in, in private. But the, the intention thing for me, it, it's a lot more tied to the emotional side of it. And that's why, you know, I was mm. mentioning about how um, Dispenza talks about, um, you know, uh, getting that feeling of what it, it it's not only what it's like to achieve the the thing, but it's just getting in touch with that emotional part of you, which is a big part. Let's face it, we're emotional creatures. You know, mm -hmm. we yeah. uh, it, it, it's such a big part of what um, you know drives and helps us navigate uh, life, and and so you know that gives us those those impulses, those nudges to to do things. So. Without mm. getting in touch of those, I think that's that's uh, it becomes difficult, and I think it's just I'm a big fan of anything that raises our level of awareness on a day to day basis. Yeah. As I say, yeah, exactly. you know, mm -hmm. told you one of my slogans: awareness allows change, right? Mm. And it, until we bring things to the surface and recognize their their value, their benefit to us, or we recognize, oh, wow, this is standing in my way, it's really hard to make you know positive change in our lives, and so. Um, I think, you know, the, the, the other element of intention setting is that bringing things to the level of awareness, right? Of so much of what we do, is, especially as we get older, we're on autopilot or, we, you know, we're very habitual. We, you know, don't make a lot of decisions consciously anymore. And so by setting a clear intention for ourselves, you know, it gets us, as you say, out of our comfort zone. It, maybe it challenges us or maybe it just makes us realize some of the things that we're, we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis that either are good for us or we recognize mm. actually I'm better at that than I thought or um, ah, I recognize how this is standing in my way. Mm. Yeah, and it's, 
Yeah, I, th- I mean, the the uh, the benefits of it, and maybe, maybe what it is. I think we we kind of agree uh, agree on that. I, I I just realized that how you can bake it into to small d- different ways of baking it into small kinds of activities as well. I started mm-hmm. thinking about like my, my uh, our karate practice, for instance. Like in, in the beginning of the end of the karate practice, you all, always have like a. Uh, a very small moment where it's kind of meditative, where you're there to clear the mind. And I always utilize that to just, okay, be here now, but also think, okay, so what am I going to focus on today? What 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 do I, I want to, what's my intention with the training? And so am I here to have fun or is there a certain technique that I want to practice or focus on? or And just, again, in that training, just have a theme. And then at the end of the training, you have the same thing so you have a little bit of a time for meditation and there's time to just say yeah how did that go yeah i actually did that there and there Mm, you know it makes me feel pretty good so just put creating that with that awareness of what do you want to what are you here to do why you're here start with (laughs) with why what's your purpose Mm. and then i don't know so how do you want to go about with this training do you feel tired? Do you wanna do you wanna take it a little bit easy, or are you really ready to go max out? <laughs> you know, and same thing in in, in tennis. So, you know, I play play tennis on Friday Friday evenings, and sometimes I feel like oh, I almost don't want to go there. Well, if I go, well, what what could I do today? And today it's just about having fun, or today I want to practice my slice or whatever. This just uh, have a little bit of a theme for it. it makes it. The, the the expectations that I put on myself become manageable in a completely different ways and I just I can have fun with it mm. you know there's no pressure uh, so yeah it just really helps me to put the attention into what I want to do when I want to get out of things yeah well so now yeah. you've made me really curious so what's your what's your process for intention setting do you have some stats do you have a, a process what's your how do you when you are getting a group to intention set or when you're doing it with yourself, is there a, a particular process you go through? Um, maybe, maybe there is, but I think in, in general, uh, a few things, a few things come to mind. The first thing is that is, is it something that I want to practice? You know, something that I've been, uh, been noticing recently, like, Oh, it would be, it would be helpful for me to do more of this. Or uh, thinking about my development space, it might be a part of the coaching that recently I've been. Um, if I've received coaching and I and I, th- and I realize oh, I want to get better on working with how I use my language to um, to do something, and then then that might be my my intention. Okay, so today I'm really going to focus on how I use my language, how I how I choose my words, kind of thing. That might be an intention. And it's just that I want to practice to be become better at this. And this is related to this part of, I th- think maybe we've talked about that as well too. You, you mentioned the, the, the word awareness. So be, 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 if I'm consciously skilled on something, so I, I put my attention to, to what I'm actually practicing, but I want to become unconsciously skilled, meaning that I don't really have to think about what I'm doing. It becomes a part of my natural part. A natural natural skill set, I would say. So it's about bringing to attention what is it that I want to want to focus on that I know that I can refine or do a little bit better, uh, and then mm, work on that. So it becomes part of my natural kind of uh, toolbox or skill set or whatever it is. Yeah, that's so, so that that's one thing. Mm-hmm. And and um, just if I can add to that, so I mean that's exactly what I mean by internalizing, right? So when you yeah. talk about that, taking that oh, that the um, conscious skill set, the thing that you're you know conscious of doing, and you just internalize it so that you don't have to think about it. Like whether it's your yeah. you know sports, that's the reason we practice so that when we play in a game, uh, you know we we can focus on strategy. What we don't have to w- think about the whole steps we're taking. Um, so mm. sorry to interrupt you, but that, that's the, for me, that's the connection that internalizing, I think is, is the way y- you would just articulate it differently. But I, I think we both mm. agree on that step. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Okay, cool. And, <laughs> but I, so having that said, I think it's really, that, that makes sense. So if I've recently discovered like, oh, I didn't know that I, I didn't know that I didn't know this. Mm. So I've, you know, I just go, oh, this is this is something new for me that I oh I never had that realization before. Then putting that into my 
awareness and intentionally bringing that into my to my awareness then hopefully that could be a part a part of internalizing it yeah so that's one one thing that that comes to mind um but then the other thing is really about the mood you know so what kind of how am i feeling today mm-hmm. so uh, yeah is it something like yeah t- actually today i'm feeling a little bit off perhaps or i feel a little bit tired well if i go off let's say that i go for a run well today the intention is not going to be to go to go full speed today is just i'm just today i'm just going to enjoy myself or today i'm going to uh, my intention is to uh, get energized by 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 this run, or it might just be that I'm just going to focus on my breathing today while I'm running, and, and just yeah, bringing the attention to different parts of it, and then that might change. And then when I, when I start doing something, it's like oh now I feel really good. Now I will actually really, really want to max out or go go full speed. So that might change, but it just helps me to go into something if if there is a little bit of resistance to something then um that i go into it ease into it in, in a way that well i have something to learn here right say that i'm going into a meeting that i don't really i don't really feel like having this meeting but okay well at least okay what 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 could be an intention that could help me with this meeting well i might be able to learn something okay well then the, then the intention is to learn something for the meeting if i do that mm, great and that very often that energizes you again brings other intentions into life just go in with it listen learn something yeah or maybe it is to um today i want to see see how i can inspire others that might be it doesn't happen for me very often but yeah sure it might be an intention that you can set for yourself so the how does your intention setting affect your expectations i think they're really connected to so it, it it's related to expectation setting so if i Yeah, it, well, it brings your, exp- that's a good question. It brings your expectations into the realm of uh, what you feel can be manage- manageable right now, right? Hmm. Uh, so it's not too much of a stretch, but then maybe you'll get, you'll get there in the end. So it's kind of, it brings, it, br- it brings the expectations closer to myself to hmm. make them more manageable. I okay. I see. I like to, um, I, I try to so in, in situations where I find uh, the and you know where the intention setting is really good um, is I, I also want to be conscious that I that I'm not creating expectations that are limiting that are too narrowly focused so mm-hmm. you know um, I think it's interesting because yeah I think we both do this kind of intuitively because. You know, I played in a when I played in this basketball tournament on the weekend. You know, I hadn't played in a while because I had an injury, and I, um, and, you know, I hadn't trained a lot uh, leading up to it. So my intention was to have fun, and mm. um, we did well in the tournament, and we played well as a team. But you know, whether we won or lost, it wouldn't have mattered. Um, mm. I mean, winning is fun too, so I can't yeah. say it wouldn't have mattered <laughs> completely, but. But the thing is, I realized uh, now actually just having this conversation, I realized, yeah, I had set that intention for having fun. And that was, I mean, we won the tournament, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, we came in first for our age group. So, But, but all that aside, um, the, the thing that stands out most for me is that we had fun. We had fun. And mm. there are times where I get too serious. Uh, you take yourself too seriously and my expectation and you you put so much pressure on yourself and um so you, you know it, it it that that in itself creates resistance and uh maybe you feel overwhelmed just like you know when you talk to people about they're in their comfort zone and they're trying to step out of it but if you step too far out then you know you get overwhelmed and then you run right back and and mm-hmm. instead of taking a small step outside of your comfort zone but that same sort of thing when you put too much pressure on yourself um, or your expectations are just, you know, so I think the, because the whole intention setting is about awareness, it's all about, I think it's, there's also a piece of understanding and managing your expectations. And, and I think for me, I try and when I'm, when I'm setting intention, 
just like I, I said, it's not about making it measurable or whatever. I set an intention for myself. And then on an emotional scale, I, I think about whether I was successful or not, not, not what are the objective things that I can measure myself or the situation mm. on. Um, so yeah. for me, expectations is it's, it's one, as I'm trying to set intentions, I'm actually trying to tone down the expectations and increase sort of my intention for just achieving my potential. Just like, you know, when I, my intentions that I, it's when I have a new coaching client, my intention is just how can I be of most service, right? Um, how can I add value? And mm. not, um, you know, even, even uh, you know, when you've had a few sessions with a client and you think you know where, you know, this conversation could go, um, it can go somewhere completely different, right? So that's why mm. I think, um, again, it's, you know, making sure that the intention that you're setting is actually not going to be too narrow and get you, you know, um, yeah, depending on the situation, but it's, it's not going to be too constrictive. It's going to be allow you still to be open enough to let new things in and let new things happen. So, yeah, and maybe that's a little bit of a, um, it, I realize that the, the, it's, it's very abstract for me actually. Uh, but I, but I, when we're speaking, I realized that, um, the setting an intention it's not limiting at all it's actually the opposite because it doesn't tie you to any kind of a commitment or accountability mm. if the if the intention that you set is not serving the situation then you you, you of course you don't do it then mm. either you you just let it go or you you have if you want to you can set another intention but it, it doesn't you're in no there's no obligation that you have to stick yeah. with your with your with your um, uh, with your intention in any way. Yeah, and that, if it's not going to serve you, so yeah. Yeah, that, that that's where I think the, you know, the intention and understanding the why behind it. What's motivating you? Yeah, you know, a lot of the, um, you know, my philosophy is you know you can if you want to simple things simplify things in terms of making decisions. Um, yeah, I look at things in terms of. Uh, have I made the decision out of love or out of fear, right? So love being, mm -hmm. you know, for some people, <laughs> that's, you know, we can't use that in business context or whatever, but it's, 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 uh, you, you can maybe re replace that with, you know, pause. Do you have a positive intention? That's for me, a, you know, do you have a loving intention or do you have a, a fear intention with the fear? Fear is kind of you run away from or you confront mm -hmm. it or you fight it or, whereas the other one is just, it's, it's this, creating in this uh, you know positive momentum forward and and so when you kind of you know sense check you know is is which one of these two and and that's whole that's that's part of that whole uh, process of recognizing your attention right so when mm. you're being driven out of fear often your intentions are not um well either they're not going to be met or they're, they're they're taking you off track so um but i i have a different if you like i'm going to well, I, I was hoping to share some of my steps. <laughs> yeah, um, sure. So I, I think for me, I've I've some clear steps um, it, for intention setting, uh, and I'm glad you bring up the topic because uh, you know uh, as I as I think of now, I, I was thinking what what are my what are my steps because I I know I had some, and it made me realize I haven't done it in a while. Um, mm. uh, you know like you say you do you do some you do these things automatically so i haven't consciously gone through the steps but when i yeah. when i do intention setting with a group or or so on there's there is a process that i like to follow and the first thing is you know is is you know stating the intention when you put it out there um then it gives you an opportunity to kind of have a look at it and <laughs> assess it and and uh mm. think about if uh think about it and then so, so you know, getting getting uh, getting the the intention first of all stated, and then um, and then you know reflecting on is it clear? You know, uh, making sure that there's some clarity to it. Do you understand what your what your intention is? Right. Sometimes we we're so programmed with catchphrases and so on, and we just kind of throw something out there because it sounds good. But do we even know what that means? You know, do we even, mm -hmm. do we know the why behind it? What does it, is it, does it have, can we connect with it, right? So, mm -hmm. so really finding that clarity and then really making sure that it's positive. I just talked about the love-fear dichotomy. Um, mm -hmm. Look, I'm not saying that's like a universal law. I'm saying it's just something that, that helps guide my decisions. Um, so, Mm. Being positive, making sure that that your intention is one that's 
you know, linked up with your values. And I think values are really important for this whole intention setting piece because sometimes we'll set out to do something and, you know, it just, it doesn't make us feel good. And we realize actually that's in conflict with my, you know, with my own values. So, Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's uh, an important one that, that, you know, being positive. And then uh, another really key point for me is keeping it simple. You know, we, mm. we can get really extravagant about, you know, the intention we have and all the reasons behind it. But at the end of the day, keep it simple, right? Mm. Um, uh, you know, the KISS, KISS acronym. Um, mm. I think that's really, uh, it's really important not to overcomplicate this thing, right? Um, mm. it can, it, it, and the simpler it is, the more often you'll use it, the more often that you'll yeah. imp- implement it. And then the the last piece is, you know, is to then shift those limiting beliefs. So from the, from starting the starting point where you, you know, you state your intention to going through the steps of, you know, making sure that it's clear and positive and simple. And then before you kind of go, okay, I'm finished setting my attention. Um, there's this, um, okay, do I feel any resistance? Do I, are there any roadblocks? And then in terms of, you know, my thinking, you know, I, oh, I can't do that. Nah, that's not really me. Or, you know, um, mm. th- you know, I'd like to, but that'll never work. You know, the, the, mm. these kind of things that come up and you can recognize the beliefs very quickly by the, the thoughts that are generated. And, and I think when you, when you make sure that those five kind of things are, um, are covered, I think it, the intention setting can be very powerful. Um, so mm. So yeah, those are the those are, I guess tips, but those are certainly what I take other people through, um, you know, I, or those are the recommendations I make, the kind of guidelines, if you will, or the principles uh, mm. for for intention setting that I like to use. Yeah, yeah. that's great. I mean, I, as as you said, I th- I think for me, I I never really I never really think in this does. However, if I'm working with clients. And and then some of course sometimes I ask that question. So what's your intention with with the setting today? And very often so oh what does that mean? You know I I don't know. Well okay well then that's an interesting conversation starter. Well, exactly. Yeah what is an intention right? So then then uh, what could what what could it be? Yeah. Um, and if if there's something well, I mean when you're talking about is your intention is it dr- driven by fear or by by love or usually I. You know, in the, in the language that I that I talked about before, I referred to sort of reactive or creative, uh, or or maybe yeah. under or above the line kind of kind of. Uh, Those are great uh, too. Those are great yeah. too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're talking about the same thing. Yeah. But um, um, you know, if if we notice that that there's something, yeah, well, there's this is intention is driven by a fear or or a, or a false assumption or something that would be very interested to interesting to to talk a little bit about okay, mm-hmm. so how could you phrase this phrase this or what were you know what's your what's driving this intention or whatever it is and that can be a really interesting conversation in, in itself yeah yeah um, and and the, the but, whole... but i think for at least for me the the intention setting it becomes uh, and maybe it's a little bit because of you know this is something that I've practiced a lot, but it's always it has to be a positive outcome or, or not a positive outcome, but a positive intent. Yeah. Now that this is, uh, I would like to some something that I would like to see, something that would help me or help others. You know, that's uh, that that's kind of a core uh, ingredient of an intention i would say it's it's just like um you know affirmations or um you know making statements i am statements about about who you're trying to become you know the the intention just like if i had set an intention for myself uh you know for for playing basketball where i'm like um you know I uh, really, uh, I want to get better at doing this. And so that sounds like, you know, very determined, focused. Um, but, you know, w- what's behind that? Uh, you know, th- is there mm. is there a lot of self uh, self self um, criticism and so on? You know, uh, in setting attentions, it- it's great to, you know, I'm going to do my best and I'm going to, you know, strive for my highest potential and I'm going, and those are positive statements, right? And I'm not saying there's anything wrong in wanting to improve things that you're trying to do in your day to day, 
but I think this whole if you're when you come at it from an un, in from a um, you know an, an emotional standpoint, I you know we we all have an inner critic, and some have a louder and more aggressive one than others. I I uh, certainly sometimes do, and and especially in basketball, it comes out and really undermines my game. You know, I'll I'll, mm. I'll have a couple of and to the point where the guys on the you know the guys that I play with here in Hamburg, and it's like you know, you're the coach, you know, and and so good thing nobody sees me in those situations because <laughs> you know I, I let I let myself. You know, I let that negative, the the inner critic. I'll, I'll miss a couple of shots, and I get so hard on myself, and mm-hmm. it really under, under undermines me. And so I'll get, go through through, and the way I kind of go, got it in check, right? Because I've, uh, you know, I'll I'll find it getting out of control, and then I implement these things again. But I I have a I have an affirmation that I use, and I I you know, I like to make mine rhyme. You don't have to make them rhyme. But uh, but I have a I have an affirmation when I notice my inner critic getting out of control, I I repeat to myself you know I need a positive voice to make a better choice I need a positive voice to make a better and and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden that critic then disappears because let's face it I mean if you maybe there are people who thrive with that kind of angry parent or really hard you know teacher or coach that that mm-hmm. really is uh, knocking you down and you you know it it kind of but a lot of people get discouraged by those kind of uh, those kind of people, you know. Um, mm. And and I'm one of those people that you know it it wears on me uh, emotionally. So why would I let my inner voice talk to me the same way, right? And so mm. so I think um, you know the the there's something to be said for determination and looking to improve yourself and so on. But I think um, th- this is a different kind of a process. And I, I just wanted to make sure that was clear that. You know, when you're when you're coming at something where um, it's it's that emotional side of you and getting in tune w- because you know your your unconscious you know it doesn't s- speak to you in language in words it y- you you get feelings you get that's where your intuitions your that n- inner nudge um, you know it's it's uh, it, it works on an emotional level and that's why the part of your brain that creates language is different than part of your brain that you know generates feelings. And and mm. so I think that that's a really important thing. And so at least for me, that intention setting needs to be tied to the emotional side, and it and it, it needs to be positive, and and less about nitpicking things that you want to change about yourself, and more about opening yourself up to all the possibilities. And so, mm. so the this intention for ah this is these and doing a needs inventory i think is another way to look at intention setting you know um because and and this is um you know uh marshall rosenberg who you know developed um Mm. uh um nonviolent communication he you know he talks he has a whole needs inventory too and so it's it's almost like um you know this raising the level of awareness around you talked about mood understanding where you are now and understanding what your mm-hmm. needs are and so what's going to improve so i'm you know I, I notice i'm in a bad mood so my intention is to you know to you know be take it a little easier today and just enjoy and, and just you know and and just address those things that you need emotionally um and mm. it's just amazing when you can it's just think about when you when you've got the right mood everything seems to flow your creativity or you seem to just you know be Mm -hmm. making the right choices you're in the zone and 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 so a lot of that is just you know your emotional state and when you can learn Mm -hmm. to make those adjustments consciously and have a level of awareness that makes you make the allows you to make those consciously i think it just it gives you a a a real opportunity for growth and and progress and achieving great Mm -hmm. things right yeah and yeah and i think that it's it's really empowering in that sense i mean um maybe another example would be imagine if you're going into a very sort of conflict infected uh, situation and you know talk about a fear that might be driving you there if you can create an intention for yourself that is stated in in a positive way so it might be let's say that that a, a, a fear fear-driven statement will be well i would like not to get aggressive in this in this uh, situation mm. well how about changing that to well so what is your intention what 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 would you like to do okay so well i would like to uh, to be a bit more 
um, I don't know, reflective or a bit more calm in the, the situation. Or to, I would like to, my intention is to retain, re, uh, what do you call it, retain my balance in the situation. Okay, well, if that's the intention, and if you succeed with that, you know, woo, now I feel power. Now I'm in control of my of my emotions. So, uh, as you mentioned, this is driving our emotions are driving our behavior. So I can, I'm in the driver's seat. So you know, there, it's a very very empower empowering kind of thing. If you notice, oh, it works. Mm-hmm. Um, so and maybe especially in those kind of situations when there's um maybe more at stake i mean if you <clears throat> what i started talking about is your daily theme you know there's mm-hmm. nothing at stake there it's just having fun but if you're going into a situation that you achieve uh, that you perceive as a little bit dangerous or uncomfortable then if you have a <clears throat> a positive state and kind of intention setting there that can help you and and then you reflect back how did that go that's uh, that's really bringing that into the to the to the learning zone right so yeah i think when we project in the future when it, it's higher stakes or um when there's high pressure situations i think the you know that's where it's really important to ha- where that intentionality really comes in because we all often look at what could go wrong right we all often think about well you know um i need to watch out for these things that are going to go wrong and um, yeah, they, they can be some merit to that, but I, I'd say for me, it's far more helpful to have this positive intention of just, um, you know, if there's things that you haven't worked out, you know, when it comes to sports, if there's stuff that you haven't practiced and you think you're going to improve it in a game, it's, <laughs> you're, you're, you're probably highly unlikely, right? I, I mean, um, at least not if that's, that's your objective. I think um, the reason you practice things before is because then you can do them without thinking under those high-pressure si- situations. And the same goes for any, th- any other situation in life where if, you, um, if there's things you feel comfortable and competent at, then, then, you know, you, you'll have internalized them and you'll be able to do them. And that's why setting an intention that's, you know, a little bit more emotionally centered um, and, and, and positive and simple, I think, is going to get you a lot further. So if you're, if you're in a high-pressure situation, um, you know, let's say it's a, a really important job interview and you're going for that mm-hmm. and, and it's like, I'm just going to... Uh, my intention is to be my authentic self and and mm. to show them my potential or mm. you know uh, something something like that and um, and if I'm the right person I'll get the job sort of thing. Think mm. about what that you know it's that's pretty clear and that's pretty simple um, and uh, you know that that's hopefully tied to your values and um, and th- there's nothing limiting about what you're saying there right. Yeah. Uh, whereas if you go in and, and go. Um, yeah, I got to be ready for this answer, and I have to you have to come up with something. I think um, th- that that's going to just scale up the pressure, not going to reduce it and make it easier. Um, mm. so, yeah. so, I mean, that's just one example. But I think any kind of or that's a good example. Yeah. yeah. So even conflict situations as well. It's like, you know, mm. I I'm you know my intention is to you know to um, uh, to you know, use use the language that's going to help, you know, or or, or to work hard at making myself understood, um, or you know, just just kind of positive things that are going to uh, help create a win win situation, or the, you know, uh, rather than focusing on what the problem could be, it's I'm going. What am I going to contribute to the situation that's going to um, that's going to make it uh, the best possible outcome? You know, and even mm. if the other person isn't going to play along, for me, I'm going to have given everything to make this the best possible outcome. And more often mm. than not, you'll bring someone up to your level rather than have them draw the, draw you down to to something more negative, right? So, for sure, yeah, yeah. I imagine if you get into a, go into a situation like that. <clears throat> well, my my intention is to 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 build trust, mm. um, and that's that that can be very vague. But if that's 
if you put your your attention to that, you it might be the the behaviors that you're driving is that you might be a little bit more listening, you might be be a little bit more um, uh, perhaps uh, transparent in 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 what you share, etc. So it will probably drive a lot of behaviors that are catering to that intention. Yeah, and that's a great example because. Look, we, we've all learned ways to develop trust with people. If you have relationships, if you have, you know, um, you know, connections with other people, all of the, I mean, they're, they're fundamentally based on trust, right? We don't have close mm-hmm. connections with people that we don't trust. So you can, you can probably be pretty confident that you have some of the skills that de- help develop trust. So if your intention is, you know, I, I, I really want to go into this situation and develop trust, and um, mm. and you know that it's, it's simple, it's clear, and um, and you can trust that you you know you you're tr- you can trust yourself because you can think of some examples that you've created trust before in your life, and rather than looking at well they have all these reasons not to trust me or they you know they're whatever suspicious people or whatever. You know, you can think about those things, but that's not going to help your intention. And and I mm. think that's the whole thing about staying positive and, and keeping your focus on what you're trying to achieve uh, rather than what you're trying to avoid. Um, I, mm. and so, so I think the trust is a great example um, because everybody has some innate ability to develop trust. Yeah. And as you said, I mean... It, this is not a strategy. No, it's, no, no. It's an intention, right? Exactly. So, That's so a it, good it's, point. It's, it's just <laughs> catering your, or, or bringing in your authentic, your authentic self into the situation. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly, mm. exactly. Mm. No, that sounds good. Um, yeah. yeah. Does that sound like an ending, ending it's, note? It or? sounds like a good place to wrap it up. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I agree. A lot of good points there, um, and. I'm glad you brought it up because I, like I say, I, I think uh, I probably do it regularly, but it's, um, you've, you've caused me to think back to my, my process for, you know, if I'm doing it in a coaching session or, um, yeah, not every coaching session benefits from, you know, because people get stuck in their problem, but, but if there's a situation where intention setting, uh, you know, in a group setting, it's always good, any kind of a workshop, mm-hmm. but, I think starting your day with an intention is so helpful and you know I do regular meditation and I try not to think about intentions I, I try to just kind of clear yeah. my mind and see what comes but mm. but I think um, you've reminded me that I would like to do with all the stuff that I've got going on I know you're super busy too I think uh, it will really help me in my decision making um, mm. And uh, give me a lot of a lot of clarity that way. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going back to the roots. <laughs> so, cool. thanks yeah. for that. Thanks for the topic. Um, look, I hope, yeah, uh, I hope other people have benefited from the conversation as much as I have. So, um, uh, Toby, thanks for the thanks for the topic and for the great conversation today. And uh, yeah, everyone thanks, else, um, I hope you've in, benefited or enjoyed or in somehow been inspired from our conversation today. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, if you tune in again, we'll certainly have another great topic to, to talk to you about. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Toby. I'll talk to you soon. Everyone out there, talk to you very soon. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Bye.